back to my channel i do hope you're doing well you didn't think that the travel diaries installments were going to stop did you know that we've uh, had the holiday absolutely not i still have so many plans for this little series and i thought we've done the roundup of jamaica but we haven't done like a proper travel diary sit down where you're going to be seeing some unseen photos and video bits of here and i speak a little bit more about the hotel what it has to offer what negro in jamaica has to offer and yeah it's just a little bit more of a catch-up how the normal travel diaries are and of course this isn't going to stop we have still got so much more that we can do on this series and just you wait and see okay i would love to say that this is like rum and coke it's not it's cranberry juice i'm trying to get a little bit more healthy and i'm not gonna lie guys i would much rather a pina colada in here or a rum and coke but shall we get into the travel diary segment for jamaica this year so if you are not aware my lovelies this year i ventured off to jamaica i went to a little part of jamaica called Negril, and i went over literally first of september so i went on the first day of what they call peak rubbish season when you can have like your torrential rain and hurricane and everything like that whenever i have traveled to the caribbean i have always gone september october which people say are the worst times to go and don't get me wrong on each of my holidays i've had a few off days or maybe like in the afternoons it gets a bit cloudy but all in all i find when a storm happens or when you get the torrential downpour it will then clear up massively so the first thing i would say is when you look at times to go for certain places as i say jamaica said to me it was one of the highest rainfall season months and i was like you know what we're just gonna go with it i love like a winter sun holiday i don't know why um i think because they're such long haul and i think i would rather wait throughout the year and then come september october that is like my last little bit of sun before we go into the autumn and winter months but um yes i am very very happy to say that i've been there and i will definitely be going back um that is on the destination to revisit maybe a different part but I would love to go back to Jamaica again in the future. I'm thinking maybe like three to four years. I have my next couple of years planned out traveling. And then after that, who knows? Who knows indeed? But um, yes, so I stayed at the Royalton Negro. And the Royalton Negro, obviously Royalton is the chain and Negro was the pub. Negro was about one and a half to two hours from the airport. So it isn't one of the quickest transfers. If you want somewhere to be a quick transfer, I think a lot of people go to Montego Bay. However, Negro, I think I liked it being out of the way. It was a very lovely scenic route. And some of the views I saw, the sunsets, when you was coming back from excursions, the sunsets in Jamaica are some of the loveliest sunsets I've ever seen like it beat mexico for me and i was like wow like literally couldn't fault it and then the hotel you guys if you'd have seen the vlogs i give full room tours everything like that but if you haven't seen the vlogs guys i upgraded when i was in the hotel to diamond club and what diamond club is is the rooms aren't different so this is a standard room that you get so it's all the same interiors the only difference is you can choose whether you want a swim up room where you have your own pool or you can have a normal room where you'd have a balcony or whatever but the actual basis of the rooms is a luxury junior suite and that is everything that you get whether you're diamond club or not so this was a little overview of my room. As I say, you guys would have seen on the vlogs like actually how spacious it was. The screen is going to dip in that because I'm going to be showing you bits off the iPad because it seems to be easier than inserting them because sometimes I forget to insert them. And what is the point of a Travel Diaries vlog if I don't insert some clips and videos? So it's easy if I just show you on this. And my room, as I say, because I had the swim up room, it came with two sun loungers, two seats, a table, and then you had your personal little pool, as you can see there. And this here was the beachfront directly there. And then here you had the Diamond Club pool. So you was very, very central to literally just get up and walk out onto the beach. And again, if you followed me from last year, I went to Dominican Republic. The beaches at Dominican Republic are government owned. So the hotels don't have any leeway or legs to stand on with the maintenance of it, unfortunately. Whereas Jamaica... The hotels, they are fully in charge of their beaches and you can really tell the difference because as much as I love Dominican Republic, the Jamaican beaches were just, 
I mean, let me show you this for example for clarity as to how clear the sand is. Like, it was literally perfect. There's one with the sunlight. You can see a little bit more on it. The water was so, so clear. And hands down, as I say, probably some of... I mean, Mexico beaches were lovely as well. I can't fault Mexico. They was at early hours with the tractor you saw them. But I don't know if seaweed is so much a problem here. Because you didn't see or hear many rake tractors you would see the workers in the morning raking like the little bits but it wasn't like a hourly maintenance thing so maybe they don't get as much of the seaweed problems as maybe some of the other islands do but yeah jamaica the beaches fabulous within royal tenegro as well so this was my view from the diamond club pool so you have a special access area but the pool itself guys is an infinity end so this end overlooking the beach is infinity. You have two little steps here and two little steps around by the bar. And if you've seen the vlogs as well, you will know the bar was where I spent most of my days. I mean, I paid for it, right? I paid a charge for being on my own, which was more than what it would cost two people. So you can best believe I was trying to make myself have her two people's worth of food and drink. Which I don't think I've done too bad. That's probably why now, when I get on the scales, I could cry. But I had a fabulous time. So with the Royal Tenegro, they have so many outlets. There was about seven a la carte restaurants, I want to say. Actually, let's be professional, Shannon Lee. You've got the iPad here. Let's give you the actual facts of what is here. Because, oh, okay nine restaurants there's 407 suites which you might think jesus that's a lot but when i tell you the area is so spaced out it's not on top of each other like yes you have the blocks next door but it's not like too high that it's over cramps like it's actually very spacious nine restaurants seven bars there is a splash park on site which when i used to walk past to go down for dinner would always be filled with the adults it used to have like a big bucket that would just tip the water down sports and fitness centers so you had the gym there you had the spa slash salon there was a jewelry shop down below you also had um like a clothing and souvenir shop like there was a lot of stuff on site and i mean so this is kind of like an overview and it's so weird looking at this because i'm like i know where that is like this is an overview of the main hotel itself and then you have like a diamond club which is around there but as i say it's not high high rises like it's not remember if you ever saw benedorm and that it would literally be a high rise it's nothing like that i think they're about four stories high but honestly the food i mean let's just talk about dining and drink shall we because we all know food is what i'm about you girl blooming loves her food so you had the International Buffet Restaurant, which I only went to once. And I got a good little selection here. What did we have? We had some steak, jerk chicken, octopus. We all know I love my octopus. Paella, some vegetables. And the food, as I say, in all of the vlogs as well, you will see I show you the restaurants. We have a look at all the food I'm stuffing my face with. We have time lapses. The food, I could not fault. Like, literally, 10 out of 10. Then you had Armadillo, which was a Tex-Mex restaurant. You have Calypso, which is a West Indian Caribbean restaurant. Grazi Italian. Of course it's Italian, but it was also a Diamond Club breakfast place. So if you was Diamond Club, you could go there instead of going to the main buffet restaurant. And you would have more of an a la carte menu, i.e. Um, eggs hollandaise, a lot more fresh omelettes. And I'm not normally a breakfast person. However, I really did enjoy the Diamond Club um, little breakfast area because it was very quiet. It wasn't that busy. And I just, I liked the ambiance there. And as I say, in the evening, that pasta, that was probably up there with my top three favourite restaurants. Because if you saw the vlogs, I couldn't choose what pasta I wanted, so I had two lots. Yes, I had a carbonara and a risotto. But up there as well with my other favourites was Hunter's Steakhouse. Very self-explanatory. Steak galore. The bread rolls, 
they was bringing me two lots of bread rolls because they didn't realize when I was sitting down, I told the waitress that I was a table for one, but when the waiters would come around with the bread, I'd get bread for two. So when everyone was having to half it, yes, I was eating four rolls by myself. I drew the, li I drew the line at six. I couldn't eat six rolls, but I could easily do four. And when I tell you, I had the New York strip and the ribeye, cream spinach, yes, please. I tried the different sauces, peppercorn, and what did we go for? I think we went for like a chimichurri on one night, but I love the peppercorn. And then the only thing that I didn't Sorry do... Sorry about that, my lovelies. I feel like we're going to run into a little bit of technical problems on this video because my batteries, my chargers aren't working. So I'm literally swapping batteries left, right, centre at the moment. So I am pedal to the metal on Amazon to get some new chargers. And also my memory card. I haven't deleted half of the f uh, football footage. That's because I'm looking at the sports bar. Half of the holiday footage. So I've just had to quickly go through. It's already flashing. So we shall see how long we get on this, okay? But... What I was saying was I never actually ventured into the sports bar. I don't know why, but whenever I walked past, it always seemed very rowdy. And they had a snooker table there and they had table tennis, but I can't play that on my own. So I thought, I don't want to go in. It's an environment that I might not have felt comfortable in. So I just kind of avoided that. But best believe I will be in there next year. My top restaurant, you're going to know if you've seen the vlogs, was Zen. And that was the sushi and teppanyaki place. So... With Zen, if you go in, you have the option to have normal menu, which you can just rock up on. With Diamond Club, you actually can reserve your restaurants with your butlers. So with that, you don't have to have the worry of you're not going to be able to get in or you have to wait for the buzzer when you want food. You give them your times, they'll let you know if it's available and then you can just walk up. And with Zen as well, if you don't want that, the only thing you have to actually book on the day, whether you're Diamond Club or normal um, residence, is the teppanyaki stand. So with the teppanyaki, let me mute that. That was very rude. Ay ay ay. The teppanyaki is when they cook in front of you. And that, I'm sorry, is one of my favourite things to watch being cooked. And when I tell you they give you a feast, they give you a feast. You had sushi to start, and then you had chicken, steak, prawn and was there another one with the rice and oh there was everything actually everything and it was such an enjoyable experience i love the whole theatrics of it and yeah so zen hunter steakhouse and the italian was definitely the top three for me you had a little hut called the jerk hut and that done you like your lunchtime food so obviously your jerk chicken jerk sausage pork but that was over with the main pool so from diamond club you would have to just walk down it was about a five minute walk if that and you could get it, you could sit there, or you could take it back to your bit. I think you could ask the butlers if you could have it brought to the beds, but I'm not, I'm much rather like, my butler, I literally just asked to book my reservations. Oh, goodness gracious. A dog's not happy out there. Um, That was all I asked of them. Like, I didn't, I wasn't one of these that I did see there where it'd be like, get me this and do that. Um, no, I'm not about that. I would just like to have the restaurants. That's all I'm worried about, the food. The food, food, food. The scoops, a gelato and coffee bar. So up on the main bit, you also have, by the sports bar, was a gelato and coffee bar. I never had any ice cream, guys. I was trying to be really good. However, I did pop in for a little iced latte, and it was blooming amazing, let me tell you that. So, um, again, I think something that would definitely be explored next year because I'm actually staying in the same chain, still Royalton, but, of course, the destination for next year is St. Lucia, and that will be my first non-solo travel. So, well, I say first. It's my first non-solo travel for a good few years, as I say. We've been Dominican, we've been Jamaica, I've done my log cabins, I just pour around wherever I have been. But, yeah, that all changes next year. I now have a little travel buddy, eh? And the one thing that they do offer is a culinary experience. So it is an a la carte restaurant, but it is pure culinary and it's on particular days at particular times of which you definitely have to book in with the butler. And this is at a surcharge. So you have a seven course menu and you can either have the seven courses on their own or a wine pairing. It was when I went, so as I say, these prices may change if you're looking for next year or whenever that you watch this video. It was $79 for just the food or $99 with the wine pairings. And what you got for that was, I think, four glasses of wine and one glass of Prosecco. So you had seven courses and five alcoholic drinks for $99. And I thought, you know what? 
you might as well pay the extra 20 and get the full experience and when I tell you I got that I very much did and the foods on that let me just tell you guys so as I say this was one of the dishes now it is going to be very small portions you have to think this is a la carte okay this is an experience so let's take aside the portion size but this was one of the dishes it was um stir fried prawns with a spicy salsa with a few little like purees it was very spicy though if you saw the vlog you would see i took it and i was like oh that's a bit like that's tingling for me so um yeah but the food itself mm, absolutely delicious and even to the point so on one of the days i rented a beach cabana so in diamond club and the normal residence you can hire a beach cabana for the day that again at the time of when i went was 89 dollars, and you had that from 10 till 5 for the day you then have the option to have like your normal buffet restaurants brought over to you jerk cut the buffet bar anything like that or you can choose to have an optional extra menu you know me i was like you know what i've got this beach hut to myself i want food what can you offer me $35 and I got surf and turf now when I tell you guys surf and turf I didn't even put my photo on here of surf and turf how annoying is that but if you saw the vlogs you would have seen it it was a strip of rump with huge half lobster all the goodies and I was like you know what that's well worth it that was well worth it I'm looking here because I've got drinks and food and everything like that so this for example was from the a la carte diamond restaurant so the glazzi italian as i say they done the breakfast in the mornings this was my eggs hollandaise you guys know i had this and then i was addicted addicted sorry about that guys battery died but yeah the eggs hollandaise was oh delicious and then this one was actually on my first night so i went to armadillo which was the tex-mex you got nachos to start very very happy about that and then i got what did i get fish tacos oh lovely again you have your menus in the restaurants you can choose what you want i was having two starters and two mains and no one questioned me on it so you can literally eat your heart's content and they'll always have at the bottom um, an optional extra so it might be an upgraded steak a bit of lobster an upgraded fish anything like that so on my first night i thought you know what push the boat out girl when was the last time you had lobster because i hadn't had it um for ages before i went and i was like you know what let's give it a go so it said it was like a pan fried um i'm gonna say i was gonna say body butter no it's not a body butter it's a pan fried lobster towel with like shallots and peppers and that again was 30 euros for this extra dish and when it come out i mean just look at the size of that like really i would have loved to have gone out to one of the restaurants um out of the campus to try the lobster that they bring in fresh on that day but i wasn't comfortable going out on my own let alone in the daytime to be at the night time so i just i stuck with what i had on site and this was so worth the 30 dollars. let me tell you that and of course the one of the most important things was the cocktails and i went through my few share of cocktails <laughs> my favorite was one of the mango daiquiris i was partial to a bbc a mudslide i was partial to many other flavors of daiquiris a bob marley you would have seen it was the red yellow green daiquiri all different flavors i safe to say i like to experiment i worked my way through that menu and i love a frozen cocktail because a frozen cocktail is like a slush puppy they just slide down too easily, didn't they? They just, mm, too easy. And talking about too easy, so say, for example, where was we? On trips. So the only thing that I did notice, guys, the trips seem to be a lot more expensive. So if you are looking to go to Jamaica, I would say definitely take a little bit of extra spends for your trips. I normally take about 500 for trips. That's me just personally. That's not saying that's a set amount, but... I know when I go somewhere, I like to have a good first few days relaxing and then it will be like in, out, in, out. I like to get, I'm going to say like between four and five trips in when I go for a two week. And I did get roughly five trips in. However, mine with discount, I got a 12% discount off the 2E rep because I was buying in bulk. Mine still cost me $700. But three of them was full day trips. So... 
you have to weigh up the pros and cons whether it's a trip that you want to do all day because when they say all day guys they mean all day some of them i was being picked up five six o'clock in the morning and i wasn't getting back till seven to nine at night like it varied because you'd have traffic sometimes delays everything like that and the only thing i would say if you go to negro and you get your trips into kingston the drive from negro to kingston can be between three to four hours so you think you could be having six to eight hours on a coach so that is something i would consider because i didn't actually realize how long the journey was from negro into like say kingston and montego bay so it is a very long, long trip. But you still get, I would say, at least five hours of the excursion. Like, when you get there, you get there. That's why they leave so early. So the best one was we went to Bob Marley's house. And when I tell you, this jerk chicken, it was better than my hotel's jerk chicken. That's saying something. This was, you pulled up, we was driving up to um, Blue Mountains which was their like coffee fields and you was driving these winding winding because if you've been in the Caribbean you know their roads they're literally like cliff face winding and it was just this little like hut on the corner of the cliff and it was like okay we're going in here for lunch rice peas sliced cabbages and the biggest jerk chicken leg I have ever seen when I tell you, my mouth watered. And that was it. I was comparing all of my trip food to that. And you know what? I did not find a trip food that equaled that. That creme de la creme. As I say, this was where we was going up to. It was a um, where they did the coffee, you know? So as you can see, Canon, there we go. It was literally just overlooking mountains and bulrushes. It was actually very, very peaceful. But... When we come into terms of like Shannon exploring, Shannon just likes to go all out, doesn't she? She kind of has no fear on holiday. Put me in England on a roller coaster and I'm like, ooh, I am getting better, but I'm still, ooh. Put me on a zip line in the middle of Jamaica. Put me on a Tarzan swinging rope in the middle of Jamaica. I'm fine. Put me climbing a waterfall. Hmm, I'm fine. But at home, put me on a roller coaster, and I'm like, hmm. So I did, I feel I've done a good bit of exploring. So one of the places I went to was called Jam West. Okay, guys, Jam West. And this is basically Canon. I loved their logo here. So funky. This was their outdoor adventure place. So they had so much there, ranging from people with children to adrenaline junkies. And you could choose one activity or customize your own bundle so i done three when i was there if you saw the vlogs you know what i'm going to say one of them was an actual disaster and i almost caused myself very bad harm so um let me just show you the one i almost caused myself harm in so shannon wanted to do an atv look at the size of this thing to shannon you can tell by Shannon's face, she had no clue what she was doing. Here, I quickly clocked the cameraman and I was like, hmm, chuck a smile. I, um, <laughs> there was a bit where you had to go down a ramp. I couldn't turn my ATV and instead of going down, I went straight and down and almost toppled myself out of the ATV. When I tell you, these ATVs are hard to drive. I'm thinking it's going to be like, meh. No. First off, the handlebars are huge. A lot bigger than my little Fiat 500 steering wheel. And to turn it, it, you needed strength to turn that. You had to have your thumb constantly on the thing. So when we stopped off, a lot of people were saying like their thumb was killing. So you have to have your thumb in a constant position for the gas to go forward. It was jolting. You know like when you're trying to get the bite off a clutch? I just could not get that rhythm. So, uh, <laughs> obviously, that was a disaster. And they was like, can you go with someone? And there was an American guy. <laughs> when I went down, he was like, what happened? And I was like, I don't know. And they said, oh, can you go with your husband? And I was like, I don't know that man. And they're like, who are you here with? I was like, I'm on my own. So, I actually got a tour guide. So, I had one of the professional people on the front. And I was on the back. And when I tell you, I gripped 
them little handlebars beside me for dear life because obviously he knew what he was doing. I was getting taken through the dirt tracks. We was doing everything they told you in the demos not to do. Your donuts, your flip. Oh, we was doing that. So I kind of got an extra experience, I would say. But this one, you can kind of tell, like, I had no idea. I literally got parked up in this position and the tour guide is just at the side. You don't see him. And he's like, the man's going to take your photo now. And I'm like, oh, thank you. Look, I'm loving life. I'm just like, I'm casually driving an ATV like it's nothing. Like, there was ones that was two people and they was more like buggies. And I said, I think if I was in with someone, it'd been a lot easier because it was more like a car. But this it was oh, very, very scary. So I'd done the ATV and then you know me, guys, what do I want to do? I'd done it in Dominican. I conquered a fear of like, I'm not scared of heights, but it was something I'd never done. And I thought, oh, maybe not. Zip lining. And as you can tell, I loved my life zip lining. Like, actually loved my life look at me go i started to spin there and i couldn't stop myself i'm like hey i was like is my bum look big in this but yeah zip lining and that's why like people say you don't do roller coasters but you can go zip lining i don't know what it is i just find like the free falling aspect of zip lining so exhilarating and just <sighs> running off the side and being like three two one jump Whee! and just feeling that glide oh i love it absolutely love it and then on the other side of things i done horse riding now it said horse riding at sea i literally thought i'd done it before in cos where you just walk along the side of the beach you might get a little bit wet because of the spray of it no i fully went into the sea with my horse fully i've got a blooming little gnat in here and it's annoying me now you know when you catch it and you're like mm. um i fully went into the sea I didn't realise this until we slowly started going. And I thought, I was in normal clothes. Like I was in gym shorts. They didn't tell me that I needed to be in swimwear for this. So here I am, loving my life, in the middle of the sea with my little horsey. And like you can tell we're deep, guys. We're like fully deep. I, I find animals so calming so calming and that was probably one of my favorite excursions like the atv even though it was a disaster jam west itself absolutely but what else is there to do in negro you say or in jamaica as a whole go to appleton estate and get twonkered on the rum distillery so of course you know your girl done a rum tour she likes her drinks and this is like proper rum tasting guys so you have like your bits to see what's in there what the notes are on the stronger rums you have your little bit of dark chocolate to nibble nibble nope shan got a little bit inebriated because you got three glasses i ended up with five um a family from my resort was in front of me and they just kindly donated me two of their glasses which if you saw the vlogs and you've seen my tiktok you will know i was like Whoa. it's very very sharp very very sharp and then again i went to rick's calf that is a very famous calf that's set in the cliffs and you know what it's well worth an experience it's a lovely little boat ride at the cocktails were banging you saw the sunset and it was just overall a very very lovely place to go but that didn't stop there as i told you guys we went to bob marley's house this is his house in here you are not allowed any filming no videos, nothing at all. Your phones go in your pocket. You can't even take calls because everything inside there is copyright from what I can gather. And they literally have everything like memorabilia, clothes, original furniture. Like they had Bob Marley's bed inside like a glass cabinet. It was his original bed, like the bed surrounded in a glass cabinet. You saw like his little bathroom. You saw um, the bullet holes where people try to shoot at him. Like everything was kept as it is and the tour guide that we had he was amazing he really he just oh the best part for me was the recording studio you went into his recording studio you saw the photos of him in there and you'd hear the tones and they'd play the songs in it and you think this is where he actually sat here and like he mustered up these lyrics to songs that we still hear 
all of these years later. Honestly, it was a very, very surreal one, I would say. But also, if you want any more surrealness for Bob Marley, it would be to go to Nine Elms. Nine Elms was obviously where he grew up and his home, and it's where he is buried and laid to rest. I didn't know what to expect because they said he was the first person to be built, built, buried above ground. So they almost built a tomb above. And I didn't know. I thought you would walk in and see just his coffin. But it's not. It's almost like a big catacomb in a way. Again, no photos are allowed in that part. But you walked in and it was literally just like a big stone. And he's in there with his brother. And his mum is in the exact same formation. But she has her own chapel over there. So it was really lovely to see how they celebrate him. And as I say, they say that the family still come here on anniversaries and birthdays. And... It's very much still his place, like all the locals there. Everyone partaked in his favourite herbal item, let's just say. I didn't. I'm not going to lie, I was probably a little woozy off of everyone else's fumes, but you could get it in so many formations. Obviously, smoke it. They had it in cake. They had it in gummies. They had it in, um, like, body butters and balms. I just stuck with my plain jane i just had a rum and coke i was like no i'm absolutely fine thank you absolutely fine and another thing so if you go there there's two waterfalls you have ys falls and you have duns river falls ys falls is very calming it's still a bit of a peak a peak like a trek but there's me i'm just chilling loving life and where are we here definitely loving life here having a little laugh with the guy I'm like, yeah, peace out. But this was where you do the Tarzan rope. However, Dunn's is completely different. So shall we have a laugh at Shannon trying to do the Tarzan rope? If you've got TikTok, you would have seen this. Look, wee! Yay! <laughs> Guys, if you haven't seen my TikTok, you need to get over there because that is the place where it is. YS Falls was kind of like all little natural springs and then you had it where you could climb up it wasn't as high as duns fall uh duns river falls but ys falls was a lot more like you could go in for your picture and come out duns river falls i mean here you can just see i'm climbing okay guys i'm climbing and when i tell you that duns river was high it was high as you can see i wasn't best pleased going into the plunge pole because it was blooming freezing. And I'm like, oh, no. But it was actually a really, really fun day. And what else have I got on here? Oh, you know what I was saying about the sunsets? Some of just like the most gorgeous sunsets that I've ever seen. I actually loved it. I think when I go back, I might go to Negril again. Or I might go off to maybe the other side. Because I have seen another royalton that is on the other side so i'm not entirely sure but oh, it's the first time i've stayed at royalton and considering i'd booked st lucia before i'd even been jamaica it was kind of a bit of a like if you go there and you don't like the hotel you're stumped however i wouldn't change it next year we have the same formation we have diamond club with the swim up room i don't think that will be a thing we will have every year because being a solo traveller, I would go for those options just so I wasn't in, like, busier areas. So we might not want a swim-up pool. We might not want Diamond Club when we go because we'd be all right to go to the main pool. It's just where I was on my own. I wanted anything to, like, just kind of make things easier. However, I do think the Gatwick Premium class for long haul is definitely worth it. For me as well, it's the fast track through security and check-in. Stuff like that really triggers me and, like, really stresses me out. And I just think, I can't do this. I can't do this. So anything that I can have to try and make it a little bit easier, I am all here for. But in terms of Negril, as I say, if I had to summarise it, an hour and a half to two from the airport, still accessible for all of your trips. Sunsets and beaches, amazing. Food quality of the Royal Term was next level. And also... The Royalton restaurants are the same in all of the chains. So you might think, well, next year you're going to go to like the same basis of restaurants. That's not a problem. 
Obviously, the menus are going to change, but I am not bothered because your girl is happy with that food. Trust me. And I was sending like photos and videos left, right, sent it to my partner, and he was like, that looks good. I'm like, it does. And guess what was even good? Room service. 24 hour room service. Now that's something that's something you can't complain with, eh? But uh, as I say, guys, any questions at all about Jamaica? Because I have actually had from the vlogs a lot of you say, I'm going out, or there's family members out there, or I'm thinking of booking this. If there's any questions that I haven't answered or anything else you want to know, leave them down below or drop me an email or pop over on Instagram and I will get back to you. However, it might take me about a week or so. I'm still adjusting okay i'm trying to adjust to real life but um i will get back to you okay however guys if you did enjoy the video you know what to do hit that thumbs up and subscribe down below and i say leave us a comment if you saw the vlogs let me know or what was your favorite picture or video from today's video okay but take care stay safe as always and i'll see you very soon for a brand new video whatever that may be bye guys <laughs>